our Upanishads are filled with several profound teachings. Among them, the four great Mahavakya stand out as the fount of all knowledge. In this video, I will try to explain the most profound of these four great statements, Tattvam Asi. In simple English, Tattvam Asi means you are that. But what does this mean? This statement explains that our true nature, our innermost self, or our Atman, is identical to the ultimate reality, which is none other than Brahman. Tattvam Asi is found in the sixth chapter of the Chandogya Upanishad, which is part of the Samved. The great sage Uddalak Aruni uses this sentence more than ten times in the Upanishad. Through various stories and examples, he explains how our Atman is nothing other than Brahman itself to his son Shvetketu. Let's dive into this story and learn the truth behind Tattvam Asi. One day, when sage Aruni's son Shvetketu had grown to become 12 years old, he asked him to go join a Gurukul and gain knowledge of the Vedas. From the age of 12 to 24, Shvetketu studied the Vedas. Upon his return, his knowledge made him conceited and egoistic. When sage Uddalak saw his son, he immediately understood what had happened. To help Shvetketu realize the error of his ways, he asked him a simple question. My son, have you learned how to hear what cannot be heard? Do you know how to perceive what cannot be perceived? Did your teachers instruct you on how to know that which cannot be known? Shvetketu did not know the answer, and his conceit immediately melted away. He requested his father to instruct him on this profound knowledge, and sage Uddalak agreed. He said, imagine a lump of clay. From it, countless pots can be shaped. Yet their essence remains clay. Just as all clay forms share this essence, all beings share the same essence. Similarly, by knowing one nugget of gold, all gold is known, no matter what the shape or ornament. They differ only in name, but the truth is only gold. He continued, by knowing a single nail scissor you know all objects made of iron. All different forms of iron are merely names, but iron is the reality. He gave another example. The sound of a distant drum exists, though its origin may not immediately be visible. Similarly, the essence of beings, though imperceptible, is ever present. He tells his son, this is the teaching I spoke of. Shvetketu says, surely my teachers did not know all this. Please explain it to me, sir. Sage Aruni explains, before this world was manifest, there was only one existence, without a second. Some believe that there was only non-existence, and out of that non-existence, existence emerged. However, what proof is there for this? Can something emerge from nothing? Rather, before this world came into being, there was only one existence, one without a second. Here, yeah, Sage Aruni establishes the basic Vedantic teaching that differentiates itself from Buddhist and other philosophies which suggest that existence has emerged from nothing. Vedant says the opposite. Vedant believes that the world originated from Brahman. Even though we may not be able to experience or perceive Brahman, it is the root of existence. After this, Rishi Uddalak shares several examples to illustrate this concept. He begins with our experience of deep sleep. He tells his son, when a person is said to be sleeping, he becomes one with existence itself. He becomes his real self. Rishi Uddalak explains how deep sleep is a temporary state of oneness with the self. This teaching is also mentioned in other Upanishads, most notably the Mandukya Upanishad, where it is called Sushupti. In this state, all earthly bonds are loosened, and the panchkosh, or five sheaths of our body, melt away. Only our essence is left behind, which is existence itself. 
But Shwetketu does not fully understand this, and he asks his father to explain further. Rishi Uddalak says, when a bird is tied to a rope, it flutters here and there. But when it cannot get away, it surrenders itself to its bonds. In the same way, our mind runs in every direction. But when it gets tired and goes to rest, it surrenders itself to deep sleep. In this state, we experience our true nature, which is pure existence and bliss. If we can achieve this same state even when we are awake, it is known as taking Samadhi. Samadhi is the way to experience Brahman. In Samadhi, our Atman becomes one with Brahman. But Shwetketu is unconvinced, so he asks Rishi Uddalat to explain again. Next, Rishi Aruni uses the concept of cause and effect to demonstrate that everything must have a final cause, and that cause is Brahman. He says, when a person is hungry, the food he eats comes from water, and our body is the product of both food and water. Water originates from fire, and fire is born from sat. Yeah, the Sanskrit word sat is the same as the English word existence. Brahman has been described as Satchitanand. In English, this means existence, consciousness, and bliss. Rishi Aruni explains Sat is the root of all beings and the subtlest of sources from which all things emerge. He tells Shwetketu, Sat is the only truth, and you are that, Tattvam Asi. But Shwetketu, ever the doubtful one, asks him to explain again. Rishi Uddala gives another example, you see bees going around to different places. They collect pollen from many different trees and put it all together to make honey. Can you distinguish which flower a particular drop of honey came from? He explains that just as the honey once produced knows no distinction, when all beings merge back with Brahman, there is no distinction between them. They are all the same, their essence is the same, and their true nature has always been the same. He says, this unity is the only truth, and you are that, Tattvam Asi. Once again he exhorts Shwetketu to recognize the truth of this world, but Shwetketu asks him to explain further. He continues, Those rivers belonging to the east run to the east, and those belonging to the west run to the west. Rising from the sea, they go back to it and become one with it. Just as, when they reach the sea, they do not know their separate identities, in the same way, all beings, having come from Brahman, never know they were any different once they merge back into it. That Brahman is the Self, and you are that, Tattvam Asi. Once again, he repeats his message, and Shwetketu, perhaps knowingly, asks him to explain again. Rishi Uddala gives one more example. If someone strikes at a big tree, it will continue to live, as long as it is pervaded by the self. But if the Atman leaves a branch of a tree, that branch withers away and dies. If the Atman withdraws from the whole tree, then the whole tree dies. When the Atman leaves our body, our body also dies. However, what never dies is the Atman. You are that, Tattvam Asi. Shwetketu again requests him to explain further. Rishi Uddalak tells Shwetketu to bring a fruit from a banyan tree and break it. He asks, what do you see inside? When Shwetketu replies that he sees some tiny seeds, Rishi Uddalak asks him to break the seeds as well. He asks again, what do you see inside? Shwetketu says, nothing sir. He then explains, the finest part of that seed is not visible to you. But in that finest part lies hidden a huge banyan tree. This subtlest source of life cannot be seen, yet without it there is no life, and that very self, without which nothing can exist, is the real you, Tattvam Asi. Shwetketu requests him to continue. Rishi Uddala gives another example. He asks Shwetketu to mix salt with water and keep it away. 
The next day, he asks Shvetketu to retrieve the salt. When he cannot, the sage asks him to taste the water, which is now salty. He tells him that even though the salt is nowhere to be seen, you can feel its presence. He explains that the self, or Brahman, is just like this salt. It the real you, that Tvam Asi. Shvetketu requests him to keep giving more examples. Rishi Uddalak shares a story. When a person is brought blindfolded from a country and left in a deserted place, he cannot find his way home. But when someone removes the blindfold and gives him directions, he will reach his destination. Similarly, a person who gets the right teacher attains knowledge of the self. In this story, Rishi Uddalak places emphasis on the presence of a guru in understanding the self. He explains how a guru is able to guide you towards the ultimate truth. He ends the example once again with Tattvam Asi. Shvetketu requests him to explain once again. Rishi Uddalak continues. When a person is seriously ill, he recognizes his relatives as long as his speech does not merge with his mind, his mind with his life force, and that with the Atman. But once he merges, he no longer recognizes them. When that happens, he becomes one with his true nature. That truth into which he merges is Brahman, and that is you, that Tvam Asi. In his final story, Rishi Udalak tells Shvetketu that a man who has committed a crime shall always be punished, while one who is speaking the truth shall always be set free. Freedom is born from the truth. The final truth is Brahman, and you are that, that Tvam Asi. I hope these powerful stories and examples have given you as much insight and joy as they have given me about ourself, our true nature, and the meaning of Tat Tvam Asi. Thank you for watching.